Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. I'm so excited about this year's City Shaper competitions. Hopefully you guys are still having fun and doing really well and progressing. This video is going to give you an update of some new rules and changes and definitely I want to make sense because some of you have been asking me about mission number 12, the design and build. I'm going to go over the updates and just go over the, some clarification on points and stacks and just making sense of that whole design and build mission. So if you want to see that, stay with me. Okay, so definitely I want to take this video and clarify some things just for some of you that might be just joining us and haven't watched my previous videos. But I definitely want to also cover mission 12, the design and build, because I know it can be confusing with stacks and bridge stacks and units. And the if you, um, I'm going to leave a link to the update so you can read it for yourself. But I want to go ahead and just clarify that and visually show you how do you get points with that design and build. So let's go to the table and talk about those updates. Okay, so here we are at the table, and I'm actually looking at the website or the link that I'm going to send you um, basically explaining everything about the updates in the robot game. So we're looking at the bridge here and I've done a video about this already but just to clarify again um, I'm going to read it to you. There is no exception to rule 35 in mission 1. They're talking about the elevated places. So the bridge and flag scoring conditions need to be visible to the referee at you know at, at the as the match ends. Sorry. I'm trying to read this through my phone, not the greatest idea. So to remind you again, the bridge or the elevated places mission, you have to do this last. So the ref will check to see that the robot is supported by the bridge. If you're going to do the flags, that the flags are up at the end of the match. Um, because I did a previous video where I just ran over the flags, they went up, um, I drove past them and they went down. That will not count because the ref will look at that at the end of the match and see if those flags are up or if your robot is indeed being supported by the bridge. So just to clarify, that needs to be your team's last mission. Okay, so now um, let's take a look at a uh, rule update here for the structures. So if you're going to be, ah, don't you hate it when your teams leave the stuff like that? I need to do a better job of having them Put those back nicer when they're done but when you're if your team is going to make a structure for the design and build they um, it's considered equipment so that does need to fit into the small inspection area it is considered you know your team's equipment just like an attachment would be or anything else that you're going to put on your robot and so what they're saying is is when your robot also comes back to home, they're allowing your team to move um, anything that you have so your robot can actually come into home just as long as you don't move it anywhere else. It needs to be moved within um, home just to make sure that you know, you're know you not placing it here in, in the launch area or anything else. And then if um, I just basically tell my team, you know what? Um, have your robot end up over here and they actually put everything, they hide everything over here just because they don't plan to, you know, come have the robot come in this area. But let's say your team's robot did accidentally hit something and it's coming here. They're saying it's okay for your team to move a structure that they made uh, to make room for that robot to come to this spot. So hopefully I cleared that part up. So now let's go to the design and build. All right, everybody, let's talk mission 12 here, the design and build. So let me go ahead and just let you know what you should have, um, just so that you know we can do all the counting. You should have three of these white units, and there's actually a fourth white unit in the back circle there that you should, your team should automatically get 10 points for, because it's in the white circle and it matches white. And so you guys get 10 points if you match colors. So we have four of the white units. Um, we have four of the red units here, four of the tan units, 
and three of the blue units and there's one unit uh, blue unit right there so just to clarify a unit is just a unit so we're not splitting this up into four different units this is a unit as this would be a unit so that's that's one big clarification i needed before um, because you know we were putting this in the tree thinking ooh, is this you know 10 or 15 points per unit thinking that you know if you broke this up it would be four but this is just considered one unit just like this would be considered one unit so now let's go ahead to stacking and you know what would be more strategic and your points okay so let's go ahead and start with just color matching now the only colors you're going to be able to match are red and tan since there's only this one red circle here and there's that tan circle here. Um, you're already getting points for that white circle, so we're not considering that a color match as far as something that your team can do. So let's go ahead and just take a look at this red unit right here and just talk about the points. So um, let's go ahead and just separate the, the, the red from the stack. So this right here, just because this red matches the red circle, you're going to get 10 points automatically. So it has nothing to do with the height of your stack. It just has to do with the unit matching colors. So because this is red and it's in a red circle, 10. So we're going to take those 10 points and set it off to the side for a second. And now we're going to go ahead and count levels. So because this has two levels, went one and two, you're going to get five points per level. So that's going to be 10. So you're going to get 10 points for the two levels. So five plus five, and then the 10 points for it matching red. So that's the way you're going to get points for this particular stack here. Now, if this were somehow different like this, so now you're not going to be getting those 10 points for the color matching because it's not completely in the circle but you still will get those 10 points for this being a stack so it's it's basically partially in just like just like that would be partially in if i'm looking at this above the circle so no matter how this stack is in as long as it's partially in and you know, the ref is gonna hopefully give you the benefit of the doubt. That would be still considered in and the ref would hopefully have the benefit of the doubt in giving you that. And hopefully that would still be worth 10 points. But you can see the difference. If I push this in completely, it just went from 10 points to now being worth the 20 because this is now completely in the circle. Okay, so now let's talk about a bridge stack compared to just a single stack. So your team probably wants to avoid doing something like this. These stacks are separate. They are not bridged. So if your team did this, let's say it just stopped right there. Your team would get, you, you wouldn't get the complete 10 points because this is not completely in the circle. But let me just basically talk about the bridged and not bridged. This is not bridged because, you know, they're two different stacks. So I would only get 5, 10. I would only get 10 points for this whole thing because this is not connected to this in any way. So you're not going to get points for this stack right here. So let's go ahead and compare. So this would be 10 points. But let's say your team did that. This would be considered bridged because this is now stacked connecting both of these stacks. So now you would get, notice the difference, you would get the 5, 10. So basically now we can count all the stacks here and you would get 5, 10, 15. So this would be now worth 15 points instead of just the 10 because these are now stacked. Um, obviously, you know, if you want more points, you would stack this a different method. This would not be the greatest setup just because it's also very wide and it doesn't necessarily fit into there very well. I mean, look how perfect you'd have to be. But anyway, even if you're not, you know, perfectly in, 
this still would be better than if it was like that. So it's just a, a matter of bridging what you need to just to make sure that if you're not completely in the circle, you're still getting the most points you can, even something like that. Do you see how this is bridging the two pieces together? So again, it's a difference between if I'm leaving it like that, that's just only worth 10. If I bridged it, now I get the one, two, three levels, and that's worth five more points than if I had left it the way it was. So here's a, now a case where you might not want to bridge your um, units together. So right here, if we were to just leave it like this, these are considered two different stacks. So that would be five, and that would be five. This would be worth 10. If I did this, it's still worth 10, five and five. Now watch this. If I bridge these like this, I'm still only getting 10. I, have only, I still only have two levels. But if I do this, do you see now that they're two separate stacks? So now this is worth five, five and five, that's 10, plus this, this is 15. So now you can notice how in this case here, bridging it is not necessarily the way you wanna go in this case here. So it all depends kind of on your design and build setup. But you can see here how this separating your stacks will give you more points than if we bridged it, okay? So the only, the only time that bridging it is gonna make it better for you would be like in a situation where, where the bridge actually connects. See, this would be where you'd wanna bridge it. If you did it like this, now you can see how that doesn't help you out because you would only get credit for this unit here. But if we're completely in, it would be better to have it separate like this where you can get a point for each level rather than bridging it where now you only get points for this one level and that level. So hopefully that made sense. Okay guys, so I feel really sorry for the refs because they're gonna have to do so much calculating and well, if they have their, you know, iPads, they'll be able to just punch things in, but there's so much more that they have to look at this year than they did in previous years. So let's just hope, hopefully that, you know, we do the math, they do the math and everything matches up. So again, it is wise for your teams to kind of calculate and know your point totals, know what missions you're getting done. So that way on competition day, you're not scratching your head going, uh, what is the most points we can get? Because you know, when you're able to look at your total and match it with the missions you've done, you want everything to kind of come together rather than crossing your fingers and hoping everybody added things up right. So again, another piece of advice would be to have whoever your two drivers or pilots are gonna do is to make sure they go over with the ref everything that they've done and not done and what they got credit for and didn't get credit for because as soon as they sign their name to that, there's no going back going, hey, wait a second. So always have them take the time, tell your team, you know, I know you guys are excited, but after your robot game round, take your time, make sure you go over everything that the ref didn't miss anything. So. It's just one of those things where, you know, it's controlled chaos, where we're hoping that everything falls into place with your teams and, you know, the refs and just making sure everything is good to go. Okay, guys, hopefully you're having still fun with City Shaper. Hopefully this video was clarifying to you. If not, throw me another question and I'll try to answer it for you. Okay, guys, I'm Mr. Hino from Mr. Lego Robotics. I'm out.